Welcome to Thailand, where ghosts, spirits, magic, love spell, hate spell, death spell and above all money spell are strong and sound. If you go to Thailand and see grown up people walking with dolls and talking to them like children, don't freak out and think they are crazy. They are just raising a nice little spoiled baby ghost, because that baby ghost will make them rich, will take care of their enemies, and will give them the lotto winning numbers. They call them luck thief dolls. To understand luck thief, we have to go back 600 years ago, during Ayutthaya period in Thailand, and look at Kumin Thung, the magic golden boy effigies. The traditional method of making a Kumin Thung effigy required the dead baby body, who died whilst still in the mother's womb. The dead baby body has to be removed from mother's womb, and taken to the cemetery. The ritual had to be performed at night, and completed before dawn. The baby dead body, had to be roasted in a fire until all fat and skin from the body burnt, leaving only a dry corpse and nam manfrani, a kind of oil extracted by burning a candle, close to the chin of a dead child. Thai baby oil. The maker of the effigy would then paint it with lacquer, and cover it with gold leaf. The government prohibited the practice of making Kumin Thung effigies since a long time ago, but they always find a way to create that supernatural golden ghost. The making of Kumin Thung effigies no longer required the usage of dead baby bodies, which had now been replaced by usage of other materials, such as clay from seven cemetery soils, special kinds of wood and metal. The spirit of a dead baby is then ritually invoked through recitation of specific mantras, which will cause the spirit of the dead baby to reside in the effigy. Although the usage of different materials have changed the traditional method of making a Kumin Thung effigy, the traditional method of worship has remained the same. The effigy should be taken care of like one's own child, should be offered food and drinks, on a regular daily basis, and toys. In return, come in thongs will bring good luck and fortune. But if you don't treat it well, welcome to the world of the most terrible curse, of evil dolls. The authentic come in thong originated in a practice of necromancy. They were obtained from the desiccated fetuses of children, who had died whilst still in their mother's womb. The witch doctors were said to have the power to invoke these stillborn babies, adopt them as their children, and use them to help them in their endeavors. According to ancient Thai manuscripts used by practitioners of black magic, first the unborn fetus was surgically removed from the womb of its mother. Then the body of the child would be taken to a cemetery, for the conduction of the proper ceremonial ritual, to invoke a Kumin Thung. The body was roasted until dry whilst the witch doctor chanted incantations of magical kata. Once the rite was completed, the dry roasted cumin was painted with yalak, a kind of lacquer used to cover amulets and takra with gold leaf, and covered in gold leaf. Thus this effigy received the name of cumin thor, meaning golden little boy. The Thai occult tradition of cumin thor originated in 19th century poet Sunthan Fu's novel, Kung Chong Kung Fein. In the story, Kung Fein, a high-ranking soldier close to the king, earns the favor of a powerful sorcerer. The sorcerer takes such a liking to Kung Fein, that he offers his daughter in marriage. Unfortunately, sometime after Kung Fein learns of his wife's pregnancy, Kung Fein and his father-in-law begin arguing so much, that the sorcerer plots to have Kung Fein killed. Kung Fein discovers that his wife has been commanded by her father to poison him, and in a vengeful rage, Kung Fein cuts his own child out of his wife. With the bloody fetus in hand, Kung Fein builds a fire at a temple, placing the body on a grill, after wrapping it in pieces of sacred cloth covered in prayers. While Kung Fein chants prayers, the roasting soon reduces the fetus to a dried out husk, with only paper thin skin stretched over a skeleton. At the end of the ritual, the violently aborted child had become a ghost with whom Kung Fein can speak and communicate, a sort of guardian spirit for his father. Some common effigies were soaked in Nam Manfrani, a kind of oil extracted by burning a candle close to the chin of a dead child, 
or a person who died in violent circumstances, or an unnatural death. This is much less common now, because this practice is now illegal, if using fat from human babies for the consecrating oil. Occasionally there are still some amulets obtained through the authentic methods appearing in the market. Some years ago, a famous monk was expelled from the Buddhist Sangha for roasting a baby. He was convicted, but later continued to make magic, as a layperson after his release. A real Kamenthung is not one of the smiling plastic statues, that you see on so many shrines around Thailand. The original and true Kamenthung, is something entirely more sinister and taboo, the art of black magic at its darkest. To make Kamenthung, one first has to surgically remove a stillborn fetus from its mother's womb. A ceremony must then be performed, by someone well trained in the ancient secrets of Thai animist necromancy. In a cemetery, at night, the dead baby is dry roasted over a fire, while the necromancer chants the necessary mantras, and secret incantations that will bind the spirit of the stillborn child to it. Once dried, the corpse is covered in lacquer and gold foil, which is the original reason for the name Kamenthum. In the most authentic version of the ceremony, a substance called Nam Manfra is also applied to the corpse. The method of collecting Nam Manfra is quite spooky in itself. It involves burning a candle under the chin of the corpse of a woman who died while pregnant, and collecting the oil that comes out of the skin. It is said to be powerful stuff and is used in all sorts of folk magic, such as crafting love charms, though genuine Nam Manfra is illegal. Taking a Kamenthung home and setting up a little shrine for him, is a little bit like adopting a new child. It is thought that Kamen can grant favors for his master, but only if he's happy, and even then there can be unintended side effects. Taking care of Kamen involves giving him something to eat and drink every day. He has a sweet tooth, as most little boys do, and so candy, cookies, or other snacks are considered good food offerings. For drinks, he likes Namda Ang exclusively. Namda Ang means red water, and is a kind of sweetened beverage made with bright red artificial coloring, and flavoring from the sala fruit. In place of traditional Namda Ang, red fanta is acceptable. All gods and spirits in Thailand seem to enjoy this sweet red beverage, which I'm guessing has become a substitute in Buddhist times, for animist blood offerings of the distant past. Since Kamen is a child, it's also very common for people to offer toys for him to play with. Just like a real child, Kamen needs attention. You have to acknowledge his presence, talk to him sometime, and then he'll be nice and help you out. Otherwise, he might play tricks on you. People who keep Kamen at home are often reported to have strange things happen, such as hearing phantom sounds of a child's laughter, or the sound of little footsteps running around, as if a child were playing. Other typical poltergeist activity can occur such as doors seemingly opening, or closing on their own and other objects moving around. You can't just simply get rid of a common form once you've already had it, that would be asking for trouble. Instead, you are supposed to take an unwanted come into a temple, where some type of ritual can be done, to release you from the burden of caring for the ghost. Despite the fictional origins, belief in Kamenthung took root in southern Thailand, with widespread belief that these protective ghost children, could warn against any dangers that threatened a household. Ancient manuscripts detailed additional steps on how to make Kamenthung, such as requiring the ritual to be completed before dawn in a cemetery, and painting the dry roasted baby with lacquer before applying gold leaf. Other reported cases of Kamenthung involve people buying fetal corpses from illegal abortion clinics. In June 2010, 14 dead babies were uncovered in an abandoned rural home in Yuban Ratchathani province, and a former nurse was charged with illicitly selling the corpses for $30. Later that year in November, 348 aborted fetuses were found wrapped in putrid plastic bags, at a Buddhist monastery at Wat Pai Gim, in the heart of Bangkok. They had been bought from five different illegal abortion clinics, 
with the goal of sale to magicians and amulet dealers. Once the news broke, hundreds of people swarmed the monastery to chant for the deceased fetuses, and some even asked whether the corpses would be made available for ritual use.